लीवर सिस्टम इन हाइड्रोलिक सिस्टम देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लीवर सिस्टम देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ लीवर सिस्टम एज यू नो फर्स्ट क्लास लीवर kind of like a seesaw um, an example would be seesaw uh, like that opening mouth something like that so the first class system liver system the way it looks is like this in a hydraulic situation so this is the pivot point and imagine that we have a load that we are trying to pull up load um, or we can say F load and then the cylinder here is trying to push down uh, F cylinder push down now if this length is L1 and this length is L2 and imagine that this is at an angle theta uh, this is the angle theta so we can develop a formula uh, for this liver system if we take moment with respect to the pivot point so summation of moment in the clockwise moment all moment is equal to zero so if we do that then for this F cylinder load with respect to this pivot point it will do an anti-clockwise moment which we usually use positive sign for that so F cylinder and a clockwise moment times the distance now to calculate moment we need to find the um, the the shortest distance in this case this one so if this is theta this will also be theta so if this part is L1 then this shortest distance will be L1 cosine theta like that and then with respect to this point the load will make a clockwise moment which is negative so minus F uh, load and then the distance shorter distance will be L2 cosine theta and that's all we have equal to zero then we can calculate uh, the F cylinder load how strong cylinder or how much load we need to produce by the cylinder simply just solve for F cylinder which will be L2 by L1 times uh, F load so using a fast class lever we really don't get gain much um, uh, advantage of levers um, it's, it's kind of neutral so the first class lever is neutral because if this both length are same L1 L2 they um, they don't provide any advantage so I would like to call that neutral in terms of mechanical uh, advantage uh, neutral with respect to mechanical Oh, sorry about that with respect to mechanical uh, mechan mechanical advantage we did but so we don't get mass force advantage or mechanical advantage um, for from the first class lever let's see the second class lever I think I have enough space here so in a I'm gonna use that so second class lever second class lever look something like um, this so let me show you this the cylinder is still here but it is applying a force upward and then the pivot point is still in the middle so that's the pivot and then the load sorry that's the load actually 
SDF load and there is the pivot point so that's the pivot if we use the same notation L1 for this distance L2 for this distance and this angle is theta so we can do a similar moment with respect to the pivot point and all moment is equal to zero if we set that equation so with respect to this pivot point the moment due to the load will be EF load times the distance so that would be a anti-clockwise so that's positive plus a load and then the um, distance is L2 times cosine um, theta shortest distance so that's positive and this F cylinder will be a negative moment with respect to that point so that's negative F cylinder then L1 plus L2 times cosine theta and all of this is equal to zero if we solve for F cylinder we'll get L2 by L1 plus L2 times F load. If you look at this first class lever and compare the second class, uh, we get this is the second class lever. This is the first class lever. We get a mechanical advantage here. So whatever L1, L2 you use, we get, uh, and whatever load we are trying to lift using, we have to use a, you know, a small size cylinder compared to uh, the load and here so this is actually mechanically advantageous not really neutral mechanically advantageous advantageous the third class lever third Plus lever. It looks like if we have a load here, F load, and then the cylinder is in the middle, we have F cylinder, and then uh, this is the pivot point. So, so pivot point. Again, this is L1, L2, and the angle is theta. Now, if you take moment with respect to summation of moment with respect to the pivot point, all moment and the clockwise zero, uh, and the clockwise positive. So for the um, F load, we get a positive uh, moment because it's going to make anti-clockwise moment with respect to this point. So F load times the moment arm, the shortest distance is cosine uh, theta. And then minus the cylinder will make a clockwise, cylinder load will make a clockwise moment, minus F cylinder L2 cosine theta, all of this equal to zero. If we solve for F cylinder, the load that the cylinder has to produce is going to look like L1 plus L2 divided by L2 F load. So cylinder has to produce more load. This is actually mechanically disadvantage, yes. So we need a bigger cylinder. to lift the same amount of load. Advantageous. Now, you may be asking why do we use that? It, it depends. We sometimes need a disadvantaged cylinder. Think about our elbow. The elbow joint is basically a third class lever which is not as strong because if it's too strong then a lot of times we're gonna break our bones because of this. So uh, second class lever example would be the ankle joint where we need to lift, we need to carry our body. So same thing for the hydraulic system. 
uh, if you, we may need some um, something uh, weaker in some situation we may need something stronger depending on the application all these three types of levers are used in the hydraulic system now there is one one more thing we need to talk about if we have a cylinder like this imagine a cylinder like this is pivoted right here so if the cylinder is you know pushing or pulling a load like this um, let's think about the first class lever example this is the load this is the uh, pivot point pivot point so when this cylinder for example pulling down if this has to rotate because this is a, um, a solid uh, cylinder it cannot just you know go down without rotating so it may happen that sometimes the cylinder may just take a position like this at an angle so you know just because of um, facilitating this rotation because if it's pulling down then it cannot just have a uh, straight up and down it has to kind of go so oftentimes it is not uh, it could be mounted as a fixed but oftentimes it is mounted in a way so cylinder can rotate and facilitate some movement if this rotated angle is phi then the force that cylinder apply you know at the um, pulling force uh, along the line of this cylinder will be basically um, F cylinder um, cosine phi instead of just um, just the F um, cylinder so all the equation we have seen for the uh, fast class lever um, we have seen that uh, first class the equation was something like F cylinder uh, time is equal to L2 by L1 cos and then F load because this cylinder force is not anymore just F cylinder because it's acting at an angle it is kind of losing some force so um, it's gonna um, it's using some leverage so if if we have F cylinder cosine Phi then it goes here cosine Phi so that equation one become I would like to say one a equation for the um, second class lever becomes uh, F uh, cylinder is equal to uh, L2 by L1 plus L2 only and now because it's acting at an angle cosine Phi and then the F load now be careful not to confuse this um, the lever angle theta with phi phi is the cylinder angle and theta is the lever angle so if we change this third class lever equation it's gonna look like f cylinder is equal to l1 plus l2 divided by l2 cosine phi f load so that would be in case if we have a c c cylinder c situation like this now most of the time when we solve a problem we use this basic moment application theory we take the moment with respect to the pivot that's how we solve the problem i feel more comfortable taking the moments and solving the problem instead of directly using the formulas these are these formulas or explanation is just for you to understand that three classes of lever and what's the advantage disadvantage of that but when you solve problems we typically apply moments in the pivot point and then solve it manually instead of directly using the formulas